How do we view the earth now? Cities, villages, farms, fields, bridges, dams. This is the human world. But things were different about 170 million years ago. Then, in the middle of the Jurassic period, dinosaurs dominated the planet. Giant herbivorous dinosaurs were the most prevalent. They were over 15 meters long like the huge U.S. maxi-stack train platform. Truly amazing creatures. Some of them had insanely long necks. If our eras somehow miraculously merged, the giants could have peered into the windows of buildings as high as the fifth floor. But why did dinosaurs really need such necks? And why were many of them covered with tank-like impenetrable armor? Who would dare to attack such giants? Did carnivorous dinosaurs hunt in packs and therefore weren't afraid of anyone? But this is far from everything that makes mid-Jurassic dinosaurs incredible. Horny plates above the eyes, bizarre crests on the heads, bone growths on the backs. These animals sometimes looked like real chimeras from the most terrible nightmares. They lived among water body inhabitants and strange creatures that soared in the sky who were no less scary. However, let's take a virtual journey into that world and you'll see everything with your own eyes. Dinosaurs of the Mid-Jurassic Period The Mid-Jurassic period is dated from 174.1 million to 163.5 million years ago. Back then, the supercontinent Pangaea began to separate into Laurasia and Gondwana. Numerous earthquakes accompanied the continental split. This transformed the way the planet looked. The Cimmerian tectonic plate on the south coast completely blocked the Teth Sea, making it inland and the plate movements in the western North America coast have formed the Rocky Mountains. The Atlantic Ocean emerged as a result of tectonic shifts, which washed the supercontinent that hadn't yet split into two parts. Not only has the way the planet looked, but its climate has also changed. At the end of the first stage of the Jurassic period, the Earth got colder. Some areas became covered with ice, However, scientists doubt that this temperature drop caused the formation of massive polar ice caps. High summer temperatures most likely melted the snow and prevented it from accumulating in one place. Although individual small glaciers could have formed on the mountaintops. As for the temperature of the ocean, researchers are almost unanimous. During the Middle Jurassic, unlike the land, the ocean warmed up by about 8 degrees Celsius higher than now. Due to the rather warm and humid climate, lush vegetation covered most of the land in winter and summer. In the southern belt, groves of palm-like cycuses and tree ferns spread. Some of these fern species have survived to this day. Near the poles, coniferous trees dominated the forest. They were the predecessors of modern cypresses, cedars, and yews. The polar climate with hot summers and cold, sometimes snowy winters was quite suitable for these plants. In other parts of the planet, non-flowering plants such as ginkgo and cycuses prevailed in the mixed forests. Male cones of these trees bore pollen that was carried by the wind over great distances. This allowed the plants to effectively pollinate the female cones and spread across the planet. Forest-free areas were filled with thickets of herbaceous ferns and club mosses. The lush vegetation and warm climate facilitated the development of all living beings. And this is exactly why Middle Jurassic is considered one of the key periods in terrestrial life evolution. Numerous flies and dragonflies flew in the forests and on the banks of water bodies, while beetles looked for something on the ground. One could already hear the trills of the archibolus crickets in the dense thickets. 
In 2021, scientists from China, the US, and the UK reproduced their sound based on well-preserved fossils from the Jilangshan Formation in China. The experiment was conducted using a resonant mechanism tuned to a frequency of 6.4 kilohertz. The results showed that the males made pure tonal, that is, musical sounds. Besides the insects, almost all other animal species successfully reproduced in favorable conditions of the Jurassic. The only thing was that the number of amphibians continued to decline. Giant crocodilomorphs no longer threatened all living things. By that time, seven-meter pseudosuchia, labyrinthodonts, and ravasuchia had completely disappeared. Only relatively small crocodile-like species survived. The ancestors of modern crocodiles were among these aquatic reptiles. They lived on land and in the waters of the Jurassic period throughout all of Pangaea. Marine crocodiles have even mastered salt water. They have long, narrow snouts and sharp teeth, perfectly designed for catching fish. Some varieties of sea crocodiles have grown tail fins and flippers instead of legs to swim faster. The warm seas of the Jurassic were teeming with arthropods. All crustaceans that now live in freshwater bodies used to live in the marine environment. In our time, only crabs remained in the sea. In addition, new species of large sea turtles appeared in salt water in the Middle Jurassic. But plesiosaurs would probably steal the spotlight from all these creatures. The huge monsters were up to 16 meters long, had wide, flat bodies and short tails. They had large flippers on their legs that were very handy in the aquatic environment. Interestingly, plesiosaurs breathed air and gave birth to their young. There are also facts that suggest they were warm-blooded. The most prominent feature of these animals was an insanely long neck. They had 76 vertebrae shaped like hockey pucks. Any modern giraffe would envy such a neck. These animals weren't agile, but they could easily find food. Using flippers, they hovered in the water for hours, swallowing krill and other small sea creatures swimming by. Other similar species were commonly called pleosaurs. They had short necks and large heads. Some of them were up to 17 meters long and were the size of modern orcas or even larger. Despite being huge, pleosaurs were fast and agile and could be considered major marine predators of those times. The mid-Jurassic sky was also teeming with life. One could often see pterosaurs flying in the sky. They weren't afraid of cold spells. They had a soft tissue crest on their heads that was probably used for thermal regulation. In those days, they were small, mostly commonly long-tailed animals with a lot of sharp teeth. Their wide wing webs were connected with the hind legs. Strong claws made pterosaurs efficient climbers that could have lived in trees. Pterosaurs were predators who ate insects or small vertebrates. But as soon as these flying creatures landed on the ground for prey, they found themselves in the world of dinosaurs. Reptiles remain the most common animals on the planet. They were constantly fighting for survival. Over the years, each dinosaur species developed its own defense and attack system. Megalosaurus can be considered one of the largest and undoubtedly dangerous predator of those times. They were up to six meters long and weighed about 700 kilograms. Megalosaurus walked on two powerful hind legs, holding the vertical body position using a long, thick tail. These dinosaurs had short but very strong forelimbs and were armed with long knife-like teeth. When hunting, they helped predators instantly rip apart the prey's flesh. But another predator, V. Venator, made quite a splash in the press. In 1998, scientists found in Minden, Germany, a rib 50% larger than that of an Allosaurus. 
but the Allosaurus was one of the most gigantic carnivorous dinosaurs of the Mesozoic era. In the media, the new reptile was unofficially dubbed the Minden Monster, and scientists began to calculate the giant's size. At first, it was assumed to be 15 meters, then 12 meters long. However, some researchers estimate that the animal was from 7 to 8 meters long and weighed up to 1.2 tons. But no one in the Middle Jurassic could compete in size with sauropods. For example, with Cetiosaurus. These huge dinosaurs, who live mainly on the territory of modern Europe, like to go hunting near the water. At first, scientists viewed them as aquatic creatures similar to very large crocodiles. By then, nonetheless, they were classified as dinosaurs. The giants were about 16 meters long and weighed about 11 tons, but their tails and necks were shorter than those of most sauropods. This influenced the diet of these huge reptiles. They lived in floodplains and in forests, where they ate the shoots of trees of the middle and lower stories. However, next to the other megagiants of the Jurassic, the Cetiosaurs seemed the smallest ones in the family. Their bigger brothers, such as Brachiosaurs, were 18 to 21 meters long. If it were possible to measure their weight, the scales would show as much as 31 to 39 tons. Brachiosaurs had their own unique differences from other sauropods. They had disproportionately long necks and small skulls. Also, what's unusual about the dinosaur's legs is that the front ones were much longer than the hind ones. Thanks to this, they could easily eat leaves from the treetops, keeping their balance with a short but powerful tail. With this tail, the lizards could have well crippled the enemy. Although it's unlikely that many predators would dare to attack such giants. However, not only the giants were quite comfortable in the Jurassic Forest. Herbivorous dinosaurs, or nithopods, were only about a meter long, but they were probably very fast. The stiff tail helped ornithopods balance when running on their hind legs. Over time, they began to graze on all fours more and more often, as it was more convenient this way to eat low vegetation. Apparently, their spine began to bend because of this. In the end, these dinosaurs developed a hump on their backs like modern bison. Ornithopods turned into the coolest guys of the Jurassic period. They quickly ran on two legs and were very agile tree climbers. But most of the time, they moved or grazed on all fours. Probably such a wide range of movements helped these dinosaurs survive among large predators. Small cynodonts are considered the predecessors of mammals. They were hard to spot among other dinosaurs. In the middle of the Jurassic, they were still widespread throughout the land. One of the most numerous among the cynodonts were the Tritelodontids, Tritelodontidae, who were as little as 10 to 20 centimeters long. But these babies were far from being harmless. Perhaps some of them were omnivores, but most of them ate very small animals and insects. Most likely, they found their prey using vibrissae. This is the name of a special set of animal sensors, the whisker sensory system. Due to this, as well as some other anatomical features, tritelodontids are considered related to mammals. Scientists believe that vibrissae have played an important role in the evolution of mammals, from huge tigers to the smallest shrews. However, in the middle of the Jurassic period, mammals were still quite small, but they already had great species diversity and a large population. New research shows that mammals evolved 10 times faster in the middle of the Jurassic than in the end. Scientists have not yet figured out exactly what triggered this evolutionary explosion. Environmental changes are cited as one of the potential causes or perhaps such properties as live birth and ferocity in predators helped them to survive. In addition, they were mostly covered with fur that kept them warm at night. So they could well have hunted at night, not being afraid of predatory dinosaurs resting at that time. 
This allowed mammals to thrive in a variety of habitats and adapt to changing ecologic systems. All animals found their niche on Jurassic Earth. And perhaps 170 million years ago, one of them lived in a forest near one of the many water bodies. We can speculate what their life was like. The lush thickets of the forest and the lake were probably densely populated because they were favorable conditions for the life of various animals. A huge megalosaurus would come out of the forest to the water body looking for dinner. If an equally formidable Vihan Venator went there looking for food, they could engage in a cruel fight. Both dinosaurs are armed with sharp teeth and thick skin. The banks of the river and the nearby forest would probably be shaking from their fight. If, say, the larger V and Venator won, he would probably enjoy the enemy's flesh and sustain himself for several days. Then the remains of the carcass would probably go to scavengers such as ornithopods. Well, with so many predators lurking around, mammals most likely didn't dare to leave their burrows until night. They were in no hurry. They could as well hunt in the dark. The animals loved to eat conifer cones and ginkgo seeds. Sharp teeth allowed mammals to easily crack hard seeds and nuts. And the fur kept them warm at night. At dawn, a very hungry 20 centimeter long tritelodontid could climb out of the burrow. After a short search, it managed to find a tiny lizard for breakfast, which wasn't warm yet and couldn't escape fast enough. A young half-meter crocodile would come out during the day to take a sun bath on the riverbank. It had no idea it was being closely watched by a two-meter plesiosaur hiding in ambush. When the crocodile decided to return to the river, it was snatched by the predator right away. Meanwhile, herds of herbivorous dinosaurs could graze in the forest near the riverbank. The long-necked brachiosauruses seemed to find a real treat of young juicy leaves and shoots at the treetops. The lower branches were inaccessible to them because the giants weren't able to bend their necks that far. They needed to consume over a half a ton of vegetation a day. They used scissor-like sharp teeth to graze all the leaves and shoots they could reach. And then the herd had to move to another forest to find food. Sauropods traveled great distances and spread across the planet. Unlike them, Cetiosaurus ate leaves in the middle and lower forest story. Due to their short necks, they couldn't reach higher. However, this saved Cetiosaurus from rivalry with Brachiosaurus. So in the forest, there was enough food for both. After a couple of days, the Via Venator could again disturb the unstable tranquility of the forest. Having digested its prey, the giant was hungry again. Failing to find suitable prey, it would probably have dared to attack the Cetiosaurus or even a larger Brachiosaurus. But it's unlikely to win this time. The herds of grass-grazing sauropods would most likely fight off the attack with powerful tails. But with so many animals living in the forest, the Vian Venator was bound to end up with at least something for dinner. Sooner or later, it would have caught smaller prey like some ornithopod who failed to escape. So day after day, life thrived in the forest near the lake in the fertile climate of the mid-Jurassic. But this period was now coming to an end. In the past, scientists believed that a mass extinction could have occurred at the end of the era. However, additional research suggests that the animal world went through a major transformation at the end of the mid-Jurassic. These changes were facilitated by the split of Pangaea and the shift of continental plates. At that time, some animal groups became more diverse, while other animal species disappeared. Dinosaurs also changed a lot. But what exactly happened to them? Stay tuned for the next episode, where we cover what happened next.